Coming up next on this edition of the news, the countdown clock is ticking. See how a key element in the development of the world's most powerful rocket passed an important milestone. We got the explosive story. And finding out how a White House heirloom is playing a key role in keeping the music alive in Washington, it's a story of a gift that always in tune with the times. You're watching the best source for news and information. The news starts now. Hello everyone, I'm James. And I'm Jaden. Here's what's happening. NASA engineers successfully fired up one of the booster engines for the most powerful rocket in the world. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. And we have ignition of NASA's Space Launch System solid rocket motor powering us on our journey to Mars. And we have ignition of NASA's Space Launch System solid rocket motor powering us on our, on our journey to Mars. This was the last full scale test of the booster's rocket for NASA's Space Launch System or SLS. It's considered to be a key milestone on NASA's planned mission to Mars. Later this century, the two minute test provided NASA with critical data that will support certification of the booster for flight. The SLS is an advanced launch vehicle designed to take crews of up to four astronauts on mission to explore multiple deep space destinations. NASA is also in the news now that a postal stamp printed by the U.S. Postal Service in 1991 has become a Guinness World Record holder. Stamps have now traveled more than three billion miles from Earth thanks to NASA's New Horizons space probe that makes the stamps the holder of the world record for the fastest distance traveled by a postage stamp. The U.S. Postal Service and NASA put the stamps above aboard the New Horizons spacecraft before it launched back in January 2006. A little closer to home, the U.S. Postal Service is honoring the memory of teacher Jamie Escalante. Escalante is famous for using unconventional methods to inspire inner city high school students to master calculus. Those methods led to 18 of Escalante students passing the advanced placement calculus exam administered by the educational testing service controversy. However, followed when the testing service accused 14 of those students of cheating to prove that they didn't cheat. However, 12 of the 14 took a different exam and they all passed. The movie Stand and Delivered, released in 1988, made Escalante one of the most famous teachers in America. One of the most famous pianos in America is located in the entrance hall to the White House. It's, it's the second of two given as gifts to American people. Here's White House conjurer Bill Alman with the story. Here in the entrance hall is the great Steinway piano. Uh, this is the second Steinway that was provided by the company as a gift to the nation for use in the White House. They provided one in 1903, which is now on exhibit at the Smithsonian. And this was the one they provided in 1938, uh, specially designed with a very streamlined case to represent you know, the Art Deco period that was in fashion in the 1930s, with the great eagle supports to represent the American government. This particular case was also painted with uh, scenes of American music and dance. And so you can see along the side of it, there's Native Americans, there's uh, African Americans, people doing Virginia reels and courtly dances, uh, and a cowboy playing his guitar uh, out on the range. And so that was designed to, to represent American music forms. This particular piano is used all the time. 
Uh, it is played by the pianist for the various combos that are provided to official entertaining by the oldest music organization in the United States, the United States Marine Band, which is called the President's Own, and they play for all presidential events here at the White House. And so it gets lots of action. It would probably not be played by a guest pianist if that would, a person like that came to be the official entertainment. They usually are so wedded to the action of a specific instrument that they actually travel with their own pianos. This would be most often used though for the accompanist if you were to have a singer or some other instrumentalist that required part of an ensemble to play behind them. So the piano gets lots of use, usually here in the entrance hall. Uh, occasionally it's moved into the East Room for an official entertainment. Here's a little presidential trivia. Harriet Truman enjoys sitting down at the piano every now and then to play a song or two for guests staying at the White House. So celebrating the 26th birthday of NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, astronauts are releasing a Hubble image of an enormous bubble being blown into space by a super hot massive star named the Bubble Nubla. It is seven light years across, which is ab about one and a half times the distance from our sun to its nearest stellar neighbor, Alpha Century. The Bubble Nubla was discovered in 1787, and astro astronomers estimate it's about four million years old. They predict that in 10 to 20 million years, it will, like it will likely detonate as a supernova. There are more news ahead. Here's just a brief sampling of some of the stories we will bring back, we will bring you right after the break. A day at the beach can become deadly if you get caught in a rip current. Find out what experts say is the best way to protect yourself from this unseen danger in the water. And speaking of safety at the beach, find out why it's important to take cover when you're on the sand or you're in the water and a thunderstorm suddenly pops up. We'll be right back. High school sports fans, welcome back to game time, to pure spirit, to pure sport. Welcome back to high school sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is game time. This is Indiana High School Sports. This is your IHSAA. During the summer, hundreds of thousands of people head for the beach, and in most instincts, the worst thing that might happen to someone is that they get a little too much sun. There are, however, dangers. One of the most common and least understood is the phenom known as a rip current. Rip currents are narrow, fast-moving channels of water that start near the beach and extend offshore. Many beaches have warning flags or signs to advertise swimmers of the possibilities of a rip current. Near experts warn beach grooms that if they get caught in a rip current, there are certain things you need to do. If you do get caught in a rip current, the best thing you can do is stay calm. It's not going to pull you underwater. It's just going to pull you away from shore. Call and wave for help. You want to float, and you don't want to swim back to shore against the rip current because it'll just tire you out. You want to swim out of the rip, parallel to shore along the beach, and then follow breaking waves back to shore at an angle.
if you do get caught in a rip current, the best thing to do is stay calm. It's not going to pull you underwater. It's just going to push, pull you away from shore. Call and wave for help. You want to float and you don't want to swim back to shore against the rip currents because it will just tire you. You want to swim out of the rip parallel to the shore along the beach and then follow breaking, breaking waves back to shore at an angle. Rip currents usually occur. Uh, rip currents usually occur at low tide. Summer is not only the time for going to the beach; it's also a common time for the development of thunderstorms. And like rip currents, thunderstorms can be dangerous if you don't know what to do. If you're caught in one, every year millions of lightning flashes are produced by thunderstorms. Some lightning bolts can travel more than 15 miles reach temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun and contain more than 100 million volts of deadly electricity. If you're at the beach and hear thunder of sea lightning, get out of the water immediately, move quickly from the beach and take shelter in a building or in your car. If you're in a boat, head back to shelter on land if possible. If you, if you can't get back to land quickly, either Stay low in the boat or retreat to a cabin. There's more news ahead. When we return from the break, we'll show you how some high school's teenagers become MVPs without participating in any sports. These students didn't have to score any points on the field or in the gym. To finish first, find out why the White House is inviting some of nation's brightest and great creative students to show off what they know about science. We'll be right back. This is your IHSAA. This is your state. This is your high school. This is your athletic association. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and we're here to make sure that all of this remains yours. This is your state. This is your community. This is your IHSAA. Finally, this story. Student scientists from around the country got an opportunity to showcase their science knowledge. That's because they were invited to participate in the, in the annual White House Science Fair. That The White House Science Fair features science projects and experiments from some of America's brightest and most inv innovative students. The event now in its sixth year highlights the ingenuity and entrepreneurship of the next generation of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and inventors. According to the White House, the purpose of the science fair is to ce celebrate and recognize the outstanding work done by young people in science. That is for this edition of the news. From all of us here, we'll thank you for watching and hope that you tune in next time.